Joining me now for more on finding solutions to the spread of the deadly coronavirus is the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard. Thank you for joining us on The World Focus. Well, let's begin with your assessment of Nigeria's ongoing fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think that uh, every country is, in Nigeria, like everyone else, is working very hard, devoting such attention uh, to dealing with the, the, this disease in their own context. And the United States is really pleased to be a partner in those efforts um, and to see them become richer and deeper and connect, uh, connect with states. Um, I will say I was very uh, pleased to hear you lead off the news with, uh, with the comments at the, at, the health, at the press briefing about the importance of adhering to different standards. You know, there's uh, what governments can do and there's what health interventions we can do, and, uh, but there's also what we as individuals can do in terms of our own behavior uh, to help make this an easier problem to solve. So I think it's really great uh, for everyone to be sharing messages amongst each other and um, speaking, to, um, speaking to your other members of your community, of your family, that we all have an incredible uh, personal power, if you will, uh, to help keep ourselves and our communities and our families safe. So I think that's a really wonderful message and thank you for highlighting it. All right, and everyone is involved in this matter. It's a global issue. Just this month, President Trump called President Buhari. What is your takeaway from that call? Um, well, first of all, you do know that uh, President Buhari was the first African president that, that President Trump meant in the early part of his administration. So I think it was great that they got to renew that contact in this call. Um, and they spoke together as two leaders who are both facing um, a, a, a difficult uh, health situation. And so it was a little bit of a check in on how that's going and, and, and looking to see what assistance the United States could provide. And I know that my colleagues in Washington are working on the, uh, the provision of what has been talked about already a lot in the media of some ventilators. Um, I don't yet have the arrival date or the number on that, but we hope to hear something in the coming weeks. All right, since the outbreak of COVID-19, how exactly is the U.S. assisting Nigerian health authorities? So what's really special about the U.S. assistance to Nigeria is the fact that it builds on, uh, you know, some 20 years of U.S. interventions in the health sector. Um, you know, over the last two decades, we've given Nigeria something like a, a little over $8 billion in assistance, and over $5 billion of that has been in health. And so it turns out that the structures that we use to combat, um, uh, to, to provide HIV treatment or uh, to uh, combat malaria or uh, to, to monitor and, and reduce polio or tuberculosis have systems of laboratories, of community workers, of um, logistics management that are directly applicable uh, to COVID-19. So for example, PEPFAR, the President's Program for AIDS Relief, um, has a network of 19 labs, which was sort of the initial backbone of the expanding laboratory effort um, here, here in Nigeria. Uh, you know, whether you're moving bed nets or samples or, uh, you know, the, 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 the systems are the same. Also has an awful lot of, uh, you know, sharing networks of community workers. Um, polio had a lot to do with contact tracing and being in touch with, with messaging. Um, and those people are available to uh, to turn their attentions to COVID-19. So we have so far given Nigeria uh, almost $33 million specific to COVID, and there is an amount of money almost equivalent to that um, in, the, in the pipeline. I remember noticing uh, the other day that our, the, the uh, op-ed piece that ran in a lot of Nigerian print media um, in the early part of April said that we had provided 6.7 million or something like that. Now we're up to 32 and it keeps increasing um, as we find uh, new priorities and new places where we can be of, uh, of assistance. The, big, the biggest um, uh, contribution I think that we have in some ways is in human capital. Um, because of the long relationships that we've had with Nigerian health um, entities, we now have some 55 American and Nigerian employees of U.S. government agencies, either our CDC or the or USAID or the Walter Reed, Reed Institute for um, Army Army Institute for Research, who are working hand in hand uh, with their Nigerian counterparts. Um, often they're, they're both Americans and Nigerians. Uh, the Nigerians are generally people who came from Nigeria's health institutions and universities, came to work with us, and now they're all back working again together. So it's a it's a really um, a, a really well developed effort out of a very very long history of cooperation between the United States and Nigeria on health. For such collaboration between both countries, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in particular is providing technical assistance to their Nigerian counterparts. Is that correct? 
Yes, it is. Uh, it takes many forms. Um, sometimes it's um, you know the idea of peer review. Okay, here's what here's what we're proposing to do on a particular aspect. Let's talk together as scientists and say and, and examine this and, and make sure that we come up with the best system. Um, there are people participating in, as I mentioned, the development of the lab network um, or in uh, in research in a research capacity. Uh, and, and so they're they're in, in a variety of roles. All right, and how much exactly has the U.S. government committed to supporting Nigeria's fight against the disease? Well, as I said, uh, the running total is up to $32.8 million, um, and we're expecting that number to, to increase um, uh, a, a, as we go forward. As I said, I think we've got about another, almost that same amount um, in the pipeline as plans firm up would be identifying needs. All right, and I'm curious, are American companies playing any role in this fight? Um, yeah, they are. I've heard from uh, many American companies who are, you know, the, the um, globally, of course, you know, the United States has a really big history of, of philanthropy and private sector involvement in things. Um, one of the, um, the, the figures that really stuck with me is that while the U.S. Um, global response uh, for COVID-19 is something like over a little over $2 billion. Um, when you add in the private sector and uh, philanthropic organizations, faith-based organization, the combined number is more like um, 6.5. So we've always been a country that has um, a lot of private involvement um, in what you would want to call maybe America's foreign policy, as opposed to specifically the U.S. foreign policies, which is what I do for a living. Um, but I've heard from several American businesses who have uh, made donations uh, to, to, to move testing kits or, or mobile labs. Um, of course, some of the major um, uh, uh, sources of test kits are American companies. Um, there is a, a I've, I've heard of another who's um, working on a private lab uh, initiative to, to um, uh, pro process tests here. So they're involved in very many diverse ways, including in, in, in just financial support uh, to some of the ongoing activities. All right, Anna, this critical time, what a message do you have for the Nigerian people? I think the most important message that the Nigerian people can understand is that they need to understand the incredibly empowering role that they have in getting us to the other side of this epidemic. And they do that by heeding advice um, that comes from credible sources of information, from understanding how their personal behaviors um, can make this epi epidemic better or worse. It's a time of great solidarity, and it's that solidarity among Nigerians in doing the right thing to keep the, the virus from spreading that is going to be the most important thing in getting us to the other side. Our U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, thank you for joining us on TVC News. It is my pleasure. Thank you. Well,